And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And uh, we won't be doing any war crimes today. Uh, I'm, we're going to instead do a little bit of maintenance on the side. I'm about three duplicates short from the last episode because of all the explaining that went into uh, some potential water saving techniques. So I'm going to quickly skip ahead and we're going to hire three dupes while we finish demolishing some of this uh, remaining biomes that were in our way. Our first new duplicate of the day is ooh, narcoleptic or trypophobia. You know what? We could do with the doctor. We've got a lot of slime lung going around. We can, we can train them in. So please say hello to our 68th duplicate. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's sexy. I have no idea why that's their name. Don't ask me. I have I have no idea, but uh, please welcome Sexy. I mean, they, they've even got the lean going on. It's it's perfect. Uh, they will be our resident doctor. Yes, we're finally getting medical aid for our duplicates. I'm sure they, they would much appreciate considering considering it's been 200 cycles and we haven't created any medicine for any of them. Also, yes, one of our duplicates has... Uh, I, I accidentally hired someone who had uh, allergies, so I should probably get to some allergy meds. Before we can even finish more of this, we Still got another printable coming up. We actually do need another rancher at some point, so we're please say hello to duplicate 69, Sean Biog. B E A G? Yeah, Sean Biog, I'm gonna go with. Uh, so Sean will be joining us and they will be becoming our next rancher. It's been nine cycles already, and I still feel like I've got nothing to This game is getting so much slower. Oh steel. Nope, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Let's see. We would well, two mouth breathers, so well, no. That gives us an interior decorator with construction, athletics, noodle arms, and narcoleptic. Say hello to duplicate number 70, Tom. Welcome, Tom. You're going to be another one of our long-standing building crew. We, we definitely have an awful lot of builders, though they're not getting it done fast enough. They keep pausing out. The game is uh, definitely having trouble processing this many duplicates doing labour. That is the bulk of the demolition done. We've got most of the biomes just, well, out of the way. We're going to be going to space in a bit and we wanted all that stuff gone. However, there are a few biomes left, but we just, we, we don't have the time. Uh, the reason being, everything is getting very chuggish already and we need to do a bit of a sweep. So I'm going to let all the duplicates catch up with all the stocking urns that they've got to do. And hopefully we can also sweep up some of the uh, pieces lying around the place. It's very low priority. It's priority one. If they've got nothing else to do, they'll do it. And what is even going in there? Lead. Why am I? Oh yes, I, I'm storing a bit of lead up on the top of the map so they don't have to run quite so far to use it. I'm using it for the lead wires and since it's such a distance away it does slow down the build. So we're, we're storing some lead up there also. Uh, at the same time, I think we're going to install a mod in a minute. You see over here we've got uh, kilns and those kilns are producing ceramic. And we have beside them a whole bunch of coal, clay, clay and more clay. That Trans this uh, auto sweeper is basically picking up the coal and the clay, dumping them into the kilns, and they just constantly keep producing lots and lots of ceramic. What are we up to? 165 tons. Not not all that we need, but quite a bit. We also have a whole bunch of rock crushers over here operating on the fossils to lime. We already have much fossils we got. We got 67 tons of fossil. We're still grinding up for lime. <laughs> yes, everything's a little bit industrialized, but we want everyone to catch up on all of this, and we want the map as clean as possible. In fact, we may start just replacing some lines of, say, this over here. We could chop parts of it away and just replace it with ladders so that all of the material falls down. It just would make them closer and easier to grab. In fact, I think we can start on... Oh, I think we can start on that just about here. Well, well, all of those ladders installed, we're installing ladders instead of uh, tiles above everything here. Well on the top parts of the map. Hopefully that will mean most of the debris will fall somewhere along here and will make it much easier to sweep up and get to our centralized storage location right there. However, of course, it's time for more printables because they just don't stop coming. Now we've got a narcoleptic, which I'd prefer to avoid, and a noodle arm in arms, but they've got animal husbandry. Say hello to our next rancher. They will be our uh, duplicate number 71. We've got Brambleberry. Well, Welcome to the team, Brambleberry. You'll be uh, joining our ranching team quite shortly. This feels like it's actually working by taking out all the tiles and dropping all the debris down. We're combining them all into single piles and it's just cutting down on the amount of calculations required. So it does seem to be freeing up the, well, it does seem to be improving performance. However, yes, it comes at a cost. We now need to support another duplicate, of course. Yeah, this is, we're going through this quite quickly today, but it's just, we need to, uh, we need to improve performance because things are getting too slow and building is becoming too inefficient. I'm thinking another mechatronics engineer couldn't hurt. Uh, please say hello to duplicate number 72. We've got Nick Gaze. G-A-S-E or G-Goss? 
Nick Goss. Yes, I need to get better at names. Oh, and when it comes to uh, volunteers for our hotel experiment, that uh, that will be, I think, next episode. I've got to go through all the comments. There's so many comments. I think we've got more than enough volunteers to do a, a small hotel. Just, you know, 10, maybe nine duplicates and uh, one rancher. So a small little uh, hotel of oxygen deprivation is definitely on the cards. I do want to see if we can get one running just, just for interest purposes. Now, while they're all doing that, uh, I think next up, after we finish this big sweep, I want to do a petroleum boiler. A quick one, but a, a geothermal one. We'll put in a big geothermal spike somewhere about here, I'm thinking. And we'll just drill straight down, stick in a big uh, diamond window tile spike all the way from well, uh, deep enough. And then we'll use that to run a petroleum boiler. And then we'll start converting all of that crude oil down there into petroleum, which will give us twice as much water as if we didn't do it. But first, just a little bit more tidying up. We need a few more frames per second back. It's just too slow as it is. It's time to start improving efficiency in a few other ways as well. I have installed a mod. It came heavily recommended in the comments, and it's quite useful. It's called Allow Manual Use. Now, the reason for this is, if you look at these uh, kilns, you could sit here for a while and watch them, and what you'll find is occasionally a duplicate will come along and fill them up. The, the problem here is... Even though we've got an auto sweeper above them, we've got lots of coal and we've got lots of clay right beside them. Sometimes the duplicates just beat the auto sweeper to it and we have so many it's bound to happen. So we just turn this off and our duplicates are no longer allowed to fill this. They can still happily fill the storage bins, but they won't fill the kilns. Saves us a bunch of hassle. Now, uh, where else, else can we take advantage of this? Oh, can we do it on critter feeders, I wonder? Oh, yes. So this also has the option, if we remove that, does it copy paste across? Now I've turned down the priority on them to quite low for the time being. Nope. Ugh. Allow manual use does actually copy paste. That's perfect. We can put them on level six then just to make sure they're a high priority. And that makes sure the auto sweeper will definitely fill them up, but that will mean those storage bins will need to be filled. At the time being, I have downgraded the priority to one so we can get all the rest of our sweeping and filling done. This should hopefully mean things get filled. Uh, by that I mean, if we look over here, you'll see... I'm doing a bit of troubleshooting at the moment. These storage bins have not filled. They're on level 3, and these ones are set to get uh, fossil. We want fossil in there. But you'll notice, no one's showing up yet. Everyone's still a few pieces down. So what we'll do here is we'll find Coach Life and see what they're actually doing that's uh, causing all of this. After doing a bit of fiddling around, we've now set all the priorities on a lot of things to 3. Hopefully that will get things moving in the right direction. I mean, the game is moving better, it just, it's just not good enough. And we have another duplicate. Which... <laughs> um, we've got a quick learner with gastrophobia and a loud sleeper. Well, we've avoided loud sleeper so far, so let's keep that going. That means we've got a suit-wearing decorator. Please say hello to The Cry. Now, C-H-R-Y, it turns out that that is a Canadian radio station. Also, it's short for The Chrysler Building. I don't know which they're referring to, or maybe it's something completely different, like the Cree? You'd never know. Anyway, uh, welcome to the team. With another duplicate on board, the time just keeps on pressuring us. Uh, over here, I still have not managed to get this quite sorted. We've only got a small bit of fossil showing up here. I want to get everything sorted, this getting delivered to, and all of our other containers being sorted before I move on. It's just one of those finicky things they've got to take care of to make sure everything's getting supplied. But so far, I think we're on the right track. I think the changes have had the necessary effects. If we just check over here, you'll see that it's a nice little hive of activity as they go and collect all our bits and pieces. About damn time. All right, we'll give this one more duplicate of uh, tidying up, and once that's done, we're going to go down to the oil biome and start on our next project. To speed things along a bit, we've decided to go with the triple stash. We've got another uh, little drop-off area over here, and a third one installed over here on the far side. We're going to just try and clear at the top of the map, and then we're going to tackle the oil biome, and then we're going to clear it. Well, do our little oil biome build, and then we're going to tackle the bottom of the map. But first, it's more duplicate time, because there's always a ticking clock. You know what? Another farmer would do well. I try to avoid narcoleptics. They can cause you trouble later on, so yeah, I think we can grab a little farmer. Why not? So please say hello to Sarah. Uh, duplicate slash patron number 73... 74. Ooh, wow. You know, I'm just thinking, if I had of if I have just stuck with the 100, you know, been sane, committed to the 100 dupes, we'd be three quarters of the way there right now. Instead, we've got like, we're about halfway there. A little bit over halfway. Oh, this is going to hurt so much. Um, yes. 
first off, we're going to have to give ourselves a nice little area to drill down in here into this uh, magma biome to put ourselves a, a diamond heat spike. So while I've been working on this, I've noticed uh, this abyssalite is not actually causing sour gas anymore. Normally, if you touched oil off that abyssalite, it would just instantly flash to sour gas and cause major problems. So if that's the case, what happens if we did something like that and had a bunch of hot abyssalite touch our crude oil? I am really curious to find out. Well, it turns out you can produce sour gas. Oops. <laughs> Maybe I should have done this slightly more controlled and not went quite so ham with that, but... Nah, it was totally worth it just to see what would happen. I think what happened was I dug just a little bit too deep and too greedily. I'm going to try something a little bit more controlled over the opposite side. Let me see here. Yeah, it's as I thought. So long as you leave a little bit of a gap and you don't have tiny fractions of oil hitting it and it's actually a big chunk of oil hitting it, you can definitely use this to create a decent amount of petroleum. Uh, I think we're going to experiment a little bit more with this. This is turning out to be an interesting way to start making petroleum. I'm not sure how viable it is, but uh, as long as you have a deep enough pool, it seems, and the petroleum floats to the top, it just goes for quite some time. We're getting a fair chunk of petroleum made this way. Oh, is that pressure damage? Maybe a little bit of pressure damage along the way, but you know, minor, minor issues. Uh, most of this place is already done. We've even got a bit of petroleum cooking over this side. I'm, yeah, I'm liking this new method of boiling petroleum. I'm going to play around with this just for a little bit longer because, you know, why not? Now we're cooking. Okay. Uh, I don't think we can boil the whole oil biome this way, but I kind of want to see if you can try. With all of this petroleum production, we're going to have to siphon it out and dump it into a storage tank. I think for a storage tank, we're just going to hollow out the slime biome and just fill it full of petroleum. To make it easier, I have sort of, actually, one second. Oh, copy those settings across. To make things easier for ourselves, I have connected up these atmosphere docks to this location so that the duplicants can work in atmosphere and we don't have to worry about them suffocating anymore. Though I just realized I may have blocked some of them in there. One moment. On the bright side, the bulk of our duplicants do actually have atmosphere skills, which is not that bad. It should mean they'll be able to hammer through this in no time at all. But you know, we can't stop printing people while we're doing this, so let's, uh, let's print another duplicate to join our little happy family. Ooh, I try to avoid anemic because of the slow speeds, especially on this map, and... Ooh, allergies I try and avoid as well. That leaves us with the pacifist twinkle toes. Medicine and strength. Please say hello to duplicate slash patron number 55. We've got Chuck Lawyer Vos. Well, Chuck, welcome to the team. You will be getting straight into gophering to help us out. That does not look like much of a storage tank yet, but we're going to make a few adjustments uh, once we get that fluted water out of there. For the time being, we're just going to throw in some liquid reservoirs. We are definitely able to boil a lot of oil this way. It's not going to be automated, but I did sort of want to stop and experiment around with it. Like, look at the amount of oil there. There's no way you could boil petroleum that fast with a boiler. This new mechanic for the abyssalite uh, flaking things, or what, boiling petroleum, means you could actually boil quite a chunk of petroleum using just the abyssalite on the bottom of the map. I think we're going to be doing a bit more of this just for play sake. This oil biome is looking distinctly full of petroleum. Also, there's about four kilos of sour gas. You know, you can't make some petroleum without making a little bit of sour gas. Um, yeah, how's our production looking like? Yep, that's about 10 kilos per second. <laughs> okay, I know I should stop and just finish the actual petroleum boiler, but just, just, just two more dupe, one more dupe, one more dupe. For our next duplicate, and okay, this is the final one. We'll, we'll, we'll get to the, the petroleum boiler, I swear. Uh, we've got a plus seven animal husbandry here, and we cannot say no to that. We are going to be ranching a lot of shovels later on, so we definitely need them. So say hello to Lieutenant Shepard. Uh, duplicate slash patron number 76. Damn. All right, this has gone a bit far. All right, let's see. Where are we going to put this? We'll build it up over here. I'm just going to build a... Well, we need to make a vacuum structure to be able to go dig down into this magma. So I'm going to place a nice big block of bricks here and then we'll dig into it, put in a liquid lock and vacuum seal our way down. After a lot of building, I, I kind of figured out the way I want to do this. I've never really tried going in quite this method before. But we're going to drill down through here and gain access to this section here, which is going to end up being our liquid lock. Then once we've... Uh, drilled out the liquid lock, which should look a little something like, there we go, we've made ourselves a nice little vacuum lock. The reason we need that is, well, when you're working with magma, always, always, always use the vacuum. Or an ocean. An ocean will also work, but we don't happen to have an ocean on hand, so we're just going to go with the, the good old-fashioned, keep it in a vacuum, that way the heat can't escape. 
Uh, so we're going to drill down here and then we're going to use that door trick we picked up. What was it? When we learned how to pump magma? Yeah, we, we're going to use that to dig down a bit. We don't need to go all the way to the bottom, just deep enough that these two uh, diamond spikes here can pull out a bunch of heat. And at the same time, we might want to dig out some of this area here to give uh, the magma down here somewhere to go. As in, when we start building these, we're going to start compressing the magma and we don't want it to burst through our diamond window tiles. So maybe give the magma a little uh, breathing room would be a good plan. This is slow going. The problem being it just takes a few dupes to come in, they do a few bits and bobs and then they leave again, even though we've got everything set to uh, priority six. Well, okay, except for maybe that outside edge bit. But even with everything set to six on the inside, they're not quite getting around to it fast enough. And we've got another printable. Mouth breather is a definite no-no, and well, a quick learner with construction machinery, yeah, it, it's, yeah, it's mechatronics engineer. Say hello to duplicate 77, uh, Richard Benkowski. Benkowski? Benkowski. Yeah, Richard Benkowski I'm going to go with. Welcome to the team, Richard. You shall be uh, joining our mechatronics crew shortly. Oh, this doesn't feel dangerous at all with a whole bunch of very poorly trained duplicates, of which there are too many and I can't possibly keep track of them all. But it will be fine. It will be fine. We just got to... Just give me a piece of ladder there. I I'm trying to copy a piece of ladder, but the duplicates keep getting in the way. I'm sure they're very happy to be having a go with this. Uh, we're going to use this as a sort of a venting area so that the, the magma poke back out again. How are we doing over here? Oh, good. Yeah, this looks like it hasn't horribly gone wrong yet. This should hopefully work, and I'm hoping no duplicates get horribly scalded. There'll probably be a couple, but it shouldn't be that bad. Now, once that's done, we can start putting in our downward section there, which is going to be steel doors all the way down. Let's hope this trick still works. Only one mile scalding so far. We're, we're going to call that good. Sorry, Furious George. Just, uh, just the way the cookie crumbles. Hopefully this time you'll stay up top and try and attack it from the top. Y you know what, let's find out where you're going. Yeah, you got this, you got this. It just uh, they got a bit confused because of the diamond tiles that were down there. Let's hopefully make ourselves just a tiny little bit more space. Uh, while all of this has been going on, we've been doing a little bit of an expansion to our oil by or to our oil storage. I figured this was going to be a bit small, so we expanded it to include this area as well. So we're taking out that caustic biome that was there. Oh, and I should really wall in that chlorine vent in a minute. Oh, sour gas. I should probably stop that from escaping. Yeah, good thing we checked. Yeah, we'll just seal that in there. This will make a nice big liquid tank for our petroleum. We'll be storing quite a bit of it for a while until we need it. It's, it'll be sort of our uh, power slash water backup. Okay, so now we will start the tunnel down. We've got our mechanized airlock in place. We'll just make sure that that is set to no one's allowed through. And then once we've got our walls in, we'll place the door on the opposite side. There's sort of a... Oh, flavor jeans, you need to get back to a doctor. There is a bit of a bug with these doors where once a door is placed, if you place a door on the opposite side of it, they can seem to build through and you don't have to do anything. So if we place that door right there, oh, let's make that a priority six. They should be able to build the door through this door. Well, it was last I tested. I don't know if it still works. We'll find out in a minute, I suppose. Yep, there we go. And they can also dig tiles through the door, but only on the downwards orientation. Or, well, I know it works on the downward orientation. Some people have tried this, uh, where if you're doing the door, say, this direction, say, flat, and you can't dig through the doors or build the door on the opposite side of it. But on the downward orientation, it seems to work. I have no idea why. Not a clue. And then once you've got the first one done, you can then open up this rear door close this door so that no one can get through it. You don't want them accidentally, you know, opening that door and flooding the place with magma. And now the duplicate standing on top of here can open this door and then build through this door to the next layer. Oh, which reminds me, we should also do that and get the diamond walls ready as well. Trying to select a door takes forever. It's got to load up 77 duplicates. That's why it takes so long. Ah, that is why everything is lagging out down here. But that should give us a decent heat spike. Uh, should we make it a bit bigger? You know what, we'll find out, we'll see how it goes as we dig. Discovered something a little interesting. Um, right, that duplicate there is, is building a door through solid mineral. That's obsidian in the way, and for some reason they're still able to see it through. It, uh, it must be a downward orientation thing on the doors, it just allows them to do it, no matter what's in the way. That's, um, yeah, you keep learning new things about Oni every day, every damn day. Hey, well, once those uh, side pieces go in, we can actually dig that out. Huh, that works out quite well for us. And this thing here, we can deconstruct. We don't need it anymore. You know, we could make this just a little bit deeper. I mean, if you're going to do something, you might as well do it well. Uh, also, we can leave ourselves a way in here and we can extend this on later if we really wanted to. We won't, but I, I hate to not prepare. We have actually drilled quite deep through this. This is going to provide us more than enough heat to last for, well, several hundred, if not several 
a few thousand cycles and we don't have we literally will be able to burn through all the crude oil we've got with this but I still want to finish it and we still want to hire a new duplicant this is a very simple I don't want allergies I just uh, we've already got one person with allergies and it's driving the alerts crazy instead we'll go with a uh, mole hand slow learner strength and excavation I think actually you know what we have got so many uh, builders right now I think we are going to go with Matthew Montgomery, duplicate slash patron number 78, as a, a, a gopher to help us with all the sweeping up that we're going to be doing. We'll leave it at that, actually. We've got we've got about two duplicates left before we hit 80, and I want to try and get this petroleum boiler finished really, really soon. This is this video is going out way late. It takes so long to get things done right now. It's just uh, I need to start stockpiling more or dedicating more time towards getting the videos out on time. It just, it takes about twice as long to get a video out when the, the dupes are moving this slowly and keep uh, derping out on you. We're going to have the wonderful joy of building a petroleum boiler from the inside out. Um, yeah, so we can keep this all in vacuum and I better not break that seal, otherwise things are going to get very toasty down here very, very quickly. Let's double check, yeah, we got plenty of pressure there. Oh yeah, plenty of gas pressure too. Yeah, we'll just sort of, we're going to build ourselves a big block of igneous rock tiles and then dig it out to make ourselves the, the petroleum boiler that we're trying to create. This is what it's going to look like. We're going to have our oil boiler over here. Cru uh, the petroleum will counterflow down this direction and we'll collect it all in here with a liquid tank. And we just sort of hollow it out from the inside. Well, that's the theory. I'm currently just moving a little bit of the uh, piping and the, the power wires out of the way so it won't cause us nearly so many problems. Also, I'm still leaving the saves on once every cycle, just because we've had that, uh, I've had, what, two or three crashes so far? I, I like to make sure we're well backed up. Uh, you know what, we can just make sure that's severed. We're also still pumping out all the petroleum we made from our uh, abyssalite boiling. That's a lot of petroleum you can make from abyssalite boiling. Each one of those is five tons. Oof. Anyway, um, there's also going to be a new storage facility over here. With this setup, it should hopefully cut down on the transfer distances for some of the sweeps. For example, I want to sweep this place out and get all of the resources out of there. And then just seal it up and just start dumping oil in. We might want to start... Mm, no, we'd still want to come in from the sides. I almost want to seal this area off as well. This is actually getting kind of toasty here. And when I say kind of, I mean really toasty. People occasionally, or my duplicates are occasionally getting scalded walking through here. It's the desalinators. They just... they generate so much heat. I yeah, know. We'll worry about that later. First off, we're going to worry about building a petroleum boiler. Nothing like seeing a chorus line of duplicates just all doing what needs being to get done. It's it's not perfect. They still keep running away and duping out like that one there is just, yep, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. Oh, no, never mind. I'll do something else. It takes them a while in between jobs. It's actually faster to only have about 30 to 40 dupes. Well, I suppose it depends on your PC. Do I think I may have to upgrade my PC to get this working right? Especially if we're going, well, we have to go to 140. I don't think my PC is going to be handled as it is. The names are, where are they? Can we see them? Oh, never mind, new printables. Considering we already have seven cooks, I think we can we can get away without the two cuisine people. So that leaves us with a, another constructor. So say hello to Duplicant Patreon 79, David Wick. Okay, 79. Oh, wow. Um, we're getting there. We're getting there. We've just got another 60 to go. <laughs> Jesus. Finally, almost there. We just have to dig out these last two bricks. Uh, we've also put in the radiant liquid pipe to, or the radiant liquid pipe to counterflow. Uh, we're going to place our pump over here, dump the crude oil in. We still have to do a few bits and bobs here, and I opened up a little area here so we could get in and out faster. This will be a fully serviceable boiler because, well, I've never built one of these before. I'd like to be able to get in and out because I'm probably going to break it. It's just, you know, one of those things. We are almost ready to get started, and what is happening there? Oh, the iron is actually liquefying. Um, oh, we should maybe have that go through the... Actually, let's just replace all of this with steel. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a, a much better idea. We're going to put in some steel wire there. There we go. We'll just uh, make those few pieces out of it. Better safe than... Oh no, oh no, oh no. That's, that's always the motto. Now, uh, pump over here. This is going to have to get hooked up to the power grid, and we are going to start filling the system now. We might as well. We're going to need at least, what, four tiles of it in there? So let's not hang around. We are ready to actually light this sucker up. Uh, petroleum's going in. It's getting dumped in there. Once we have that steel door, that'll transfer heat from these temperature shift plates into the gold tile. Automation there just controls the on-off. There's I've done so many tutorials and stuff on petroleum boilers. I'll link the 
petroleum boiler tutorial if you want. It's not this particular variant, but uh, they're all pretty much much of a muchness. This whole uh, boiling trough is the same on pretty much all of them. Now let's see how quickly this flashes. I don't, I really don't want sour gas to happen. Right there we go. Why is there no power to that? There should be power. Oh yeah, I forgot about that, didn't I? Hmm. One minute. There we go. They'll have power in a moment. Now, that is not transferring heat as fast as I thought it would. Well, I suppose it is dragging it from all the way down here. Ooh. <laughs> you know, we can get in there, so it might be an idea to actually build in some more temperature shift plates just to help out with that. But for the time being, let's see if we can keep up with the flow. We might have to cut this off. We'll cut off the flow of flesh, fresh petroleum just in case, because I think this is all going to flash and I don't want it to explode. That would be bad. So let's just give it a moment while it catches up with itself. There we go. Oh, oh, no, don't pop out the top. Do not pop out the top. That would be bad. Okay, that was a bit of a mess. And who's getting scalded? Yep. Didn't one of you just get scalded there a minute ago, Lieutenant Shepard? Uh, they're going to fill up these um, deodorizers, and the hot fluid oxygen vent is giving them a bit of a, a scalding. Damn it, this thing went badly wrong. Yeah, we're going to have to go in and mop up all that crude oil now. Damn it. Well, at least we made it serviceable, and it could have been worse. Well, we would if we could, but we can't. Because it's time for another printable. Yes, time never stops moving forward. Oh, anemic, no thank you, anemic, and mouth breather. Ooh, tough choice. This may be a controversial decision, but I'm going to go with the mouth breather. I would actually prefer the mouth breather, even in this situation, over an anemic. The anemic will just end up starving to death at some point. And also it's a meep, so, you know, it's a meep and a mouth breather... <laughs> We've no choice. Say hello to Swick, duplicant slash patron number 80. Ah, yes. Just 20 away from the 100. All right, let me fi let me finish cleaning up this mess. Since this whole thing was taking so long to start up the last time, well, it, it was getting good heat in, but not as fast as we would have liked. We're going to install just a couple of temperature shift plates to help things along. Should we take a couple of mins? I think we have a very dedicated wor workforce. It takes them a while to get around to actually starting, but once they do, they get things done. Before we start this up a second time though, I think we're going to lock the doors, close things up, seal it off. If any gas does escape from here, I don't want it mixing with our uh, pool of magma. That would be unpleasant. Very, very unpleasant. Alright, time to start again. Off you go. Perfect. Crude oil drops in, immediately flashes. Once we get to the point where it needs more heat, it will draw upon this door. Door has this amazing sort of checkerboard temperature shift plate pattern thing going on, and we are pulling temperature from deep, deep down in the core. And that should keep going for a very, very, very long time to come. It's having no problems, that should counterflow. Now, the reason for the length of this counterflow, who cares? We have so much magma, it really doesn't make a difference. This was just as much as I could conveniently fit in here. And since all we need to do is convert well, all of this, and oh, there's actually some petroleum there at the end, and all of this, it should be fairly quick. I mean, I think we put in, how many cycles? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 cycles, maybe 18 cycles, and for it we get to double the amount of uh, water we're going to get out of this. Normally when you burn crude oil, you first have to convert it and all that. We just, we've doubled our water production. Okay. Then I will think I'll just finish this off. We're going to turn this whole thing into a petroleum liquid tank. We don't really need to, but I kind of want to. I think it would be hilarious to make it that big. It, it will remind me of one of my first playthroughs. First, though, I'm going to sweep it out, and then, yep, we're going to seal it up and just keep dumping petroleum in there. Anyway, next up, I think it's going to be time for our oxygen deprivation hotel, and maybe a few other side projects like, well, more oxygen. We have only got, what, three? Mm, damn it. We've only got these two electrolyzers pumping full-time into the base, and a third one that's flooding our atmosuit docks down here. However, these atmosuit docks down here, we're not going to be using them much once now that we're finished with the oil biome, so our duplicates are not going to be in those a lot of time, so the oxygen we're getting from this is going to be less useful. We're going to need a lot more oxygen next episode. Anyway, I'll uh, I'll cut it out there. I think I think we had a, a quite a productive day, and maybe if I hadn't been, spent my time faffing around producing oil using Abyssalite, we would have got this done a lot sooner. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, good luck. Mm -hmm.